Sunday night, and it's Cooking with Rudy, the Raw Edition. I'm Rudy, and uh, we're going to do a uh, kitchen recipe. A couple things will be a little different about this one. This one is actually a Czech recipe. Cooking raw means that I'm actually going to be doing this without actually just reading over the recipe, my first time doing it with you. What's the point of watching it live? Well, just like anything else, if there's any disasters or problems, I'll delete this and we'll do this another time. And you'll never get to see how I messed up. I already did have one casualty of today's cooking. Yeah. So we're going to start off with some good tea. Hope everybody's doing well on this Sunday. So, I make my tea a little differently. I learned that not all tea is the same. This is what my tea looks like. So, one scoop of this. South Miami honey. More than I wanted. And finally the tea. place this right over here and over here read in vítáme vás na rudoškova kuchyně dnes vaříme smažený sír smažený sír jak znáte je český recept tak poprvé v Americe a já to poprvé před kamerou užijte si to no a abych na to nezapomněl děkuji moc Viro a ty další lidi, co by to pomohli a s tím tím dát dohromady, no a taky bývá restaurace Stop Bar, kde dělají snad nejlepší smažený sír. Tak, jdeme na to. Hasiči už byli varováni, taky máme hasičský přístroj. All jokes aside, I do take uh, cooking with grease very, very seriously, as you can see. I'm not kidding. Um, I try to avoid cooking in grease. So I have my fire extinguisher and uh, baking powder in case something were to happen. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our potato rolling here. So. Better late than ever. I think that was last night's dinner. Alright. Just kind of make sure I hit the right button. One pack of MRE salt. And we're going to peel the potato. Yeah, I would have done it, Brembury. I would have done it. I would have done it. I would have What's going on, Hank? How are things? Also got this other thing, uh, this little monstrosity. I don't know if anybody's ever played with this. It's like a little rake. I don't know if it's, it's any faster. I'm traditional, so. I 
What am I doing? I'm making a Czech recipe called Smudgeny Sear. Uh, in America, when you ask for, like, a, I guess, a grilled cheese, if you ask for something like fried cheese, you get either, like, a grilled cheese sandwich or, like, fried cheese sticks. Uh, neither one of those is even remotely close if I do this correctly. Uh, the, uh... The vest actually made two of them. Back when I was in Utah, I had this guy that I worked with, and he needed some help with his car, and he was an amazing cook. His name is uh, Harmon, if I remember right. R Rust Rusty, something like that. And uh, so uh, somebody said, you know, one day that he's going to make somebody a really good wife. Well, he didn't have his car, so I was still working on getting his brakes done. He made a deal. Uh, he would cook me a three-course meal, and I would uh, fix his brake system under the supervision of the hobby shop at Hill Air Force Base. Well, as things were going by, um, he was getting ready to leave. That's a PCS. I think we're gonna get out. So I was driving around, and uh, I told him I was like, "Hey," uh, I said, "I actually had him running with me when I had this made." So we went over to Joanne's, and I told him, I said, hey man, can you stay in the car? I really don't want anybody to know that my uh, that I uh, sew on weekends, which is a full face lie. It was funny, though. Then I went to my favorite uh, Philippine dry cleaner over there on uh, by the south, south Gate. And after begging and pleading, he agreed to make one of these for him. I like my potatoes in small pieces, so that's what we're doing. We're making a big mess on the floor. Yeah, I got a couple of these videos out there. Uh, there's some cooking with Rudy. There's a drinking with Rudy. That one's a lot of fun. If we screw this up, we'll be doing drinking with Rudy. I don't know. I may one day decide to put this on YouTube. It's out of its YouTube worthy right now. We'll leave it at Facebook. See what it does. So this recipe you can get almost made anywhere. Almost any bar or a decent restaurant will have it. It's called Smajini Sear or Hermeline. Well, I cry you my brum boy. I'm going to put my mom in the middle of the house. I'm going to put my mom in the middle of the house. I'm going This is totally Rudy's thing. <laughs> You're off to dinner time. Well, you can finish the show later, uh, providing everything goes well. If it doesn't, you'll be wiped. But, you know, that's why I'm here. I'm making my dinner, too. Of course, in uh, what Utah, that's got to be a couple hours earlier. I'm eating dinner kind of late today. But, dude, man, we got to catch up. We had not talked in a long time. Miss my favorite uh, airplane buddy, and uh, we definitely gotta catch up. I gotta know what's going on at the museum. I hadn't heard anything in a long time up there. So what I'm gonna do here is cut up a small piece of onion. I always mix this with my every time I do potatoes. Not a professional chef, that's for sure. Hey, Angeline, how are you? We're making smudgy sear, a Czech recipe. Okay, and garlic. 
Put a little bit of this in and I'll put a little bit more in as we go. Okay, cooking grease, like I said, I'm not a big fan, so here's how this is going to work. The recipe calls for uh, let's see, two cups of vegetable oil. I think that's way too much. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to fill up to one cup and see where it is. I'm using a uh, vegetable oil. Be said I'm supposed to kind of cover everything up so I'm gonna do about three quarter cup let's see what this looks like three quarter cup is about what she had I'm gonna finish the remaining quarter and I have it one cup of oil vegetable oil okay to get this thing going I need to get this thing started so the right button again put it on high There's some variations in here. Um, the recipe can be made with either Adam, Gouda, Hermeline, or there's a couple other ones I tried putting in here. Um, uh, not Pepper Jack, but uh, I think you name that one. Uh, provolone and uh, I can't remember the name of the other one for some reason. Just left me. Um, Adon and uh, Hermeline you can't find in the US. That's uh, strictly a Czech one, so that's not going to work. Okay, so <clears throat> I asked them to cut the cheese. <laughs> Jokes don't get funnier as the day progresses. Um, and I guess the uh, first she was worried about too thin. Of course, me and my English to Spanish didn't work too well. We translated it, and the end result was one large, one small. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to, for next time, I'm going to cut this one in half, use half. Since this one's already cut, I'm going to split this one in half. That's going to be our first piece. I also set it up where it'll fit in our little bowl. So that's another serving. And the other one we're going to try is this Gouda. I think she cut this one fairly accurately. So I'm going to gauge about the same size. A little thicker than I guess I'm used to, but we'll see what happens. Now for the other problem. Um, Česko mají uh, normální uh, chleba. Chleba vydrží tak 3-4 dny a potom uh, stvrdne a musí se rozmlít a z toho vznikne z uh, In the US, our bread looks a little different. For my uh, Czech friends, how do you put on our chleba? It lasts uh, quite a while actually and what will happen to it is it will usually just flat out turn green and mildew, but it will not ever get hard. So that left me trying to find breadcrumbs. So I came up with two of them. Progresso breadcrumbs and Pope breadcrumbs. I'm Catholic, so I guess we'll go with the Pope. <laughs> Jokes. Sorry. Okay, so now to pour all this stuff in here. So here's what we got. One cup of all-purpose flour. I got here half a cup, so let's go with half a cup. Oh yeah, I forgot. 
this one is going to be interesting to pour out. That's one. Let's see. The flower goes on the left. So, eggs in the middle, flower on the left. I think this is more than enough. Let's see. Then, uh, two eggs. One, two. Hey Matt, every time I get in the kitchen, I still think of that green bean casserole, dude. Next time we meet, you have to make one of those, man. So, two eggs. Ah, since we're talking, uh, I got one question though too. I heard that eggs or eggshells are actually supposed to be good for plants. So I've been kind of throwing the eggshells out there in the garden. I don't know if anybody has any experience putting eggs or I've even heard coffee grinds out there to help the garden. Anybody hear anything about that? Let me know. Okay, so we got two eggs beaten and two tablespoons of milk. So with this over the sink. One. Two. Recipe isn't calling for it, but I am. Some ruby, big red. Okay. So, stir this. One cup of breadcrumbs. Now you're talking to a guy who hasn't even made a, what do you call it, a, a chicken fried steak or anything, but this might be something new. So, uh, one cup of breadcrumbs, so that is. Cup. So one cup it is. So this is the stuff. That goes in mixing bowl number one. Joe, long time no see. For those of you are missing out, we're making uh, some much easier. So, let me take this thing. Let's see if I remember this right. Uh, wrench, slice of cheese in the flour.
I think it's drenched, I think. And then we dip it in to the eggs. Okay, make sure we got enough egg stuff on here. <laughs> anyway, all right. Next, we dump it into the uh, the breading. Well, it's kind of like playing a sandbox all over again. Okay. And the thing told me to make sure I get the sides. Get the sides really good. If you miss anything, you'll find out because oh, that's the side it'll leak from. This is the part that makes this recipe kind of suck. Okay, so here's my uh, round one. Okay, next stop is, <laughs> wash my hands. And I think I'm gonna try this with a spoon, see if that makes it a little bit easier. And then you double dip. Yes, you double dip. So back over this again. This is actually harder than it looks. But you do not dip it in the flour. Flour is only one time. So apparently with this egg and this bread crust, it's supposed to protect it and keep it from leaking out. And I'm gonna really take my time and do this part right. They said to test the oil, how hot it is, by putting a small bit of bread in there and see if it bubbles out. Yep, it's turning the colors. And my God, it is covered. <laughs> I'm actually pretty impressed. Not bad, huh? What do you think? All right. So before I do that, let me grab a plate. And we'll throw this in here and we'll start number two. Actually, we won't be throwing anything, we'll lower it gently. Okay, now I'm supposed to watch it, see what it does. So, next is slice number two, while watching that slice number one. Okay, I'm seeing it's already turning, so I'm going to turn it over very carefully. Ah. Well, I said about that grease. <laughs> Get that out of the way. Pretty good. It's really fast. I see no leakage. This is actually pretty impressive. Now the second one's a little thicker too, so I'm kind of curious to see how this ends up. Okay, so we got this thing covered in our flour. We got flour everywhere. It looks like a cocaine factory in here. And now we dunk it in the eggs. Stir it around a little bit. Dip the spoon in here. Get it all over this thing. Ooh. One thing I didn't know is how do you know when it's done? If it starts leaking or... You know, that's one thing I wasn't sure about. I think uh, one thing I'll do differently next time is definitely get a little bit bigger mixing bowl. Boom. 
but it looks like it held surprisingly. Okay, so that's this side, this side, everything's covered in egg. And now we dump it into the breadcrumbs. This is really slick, slickery. Okay, we roll it one more time. And just like a little sandbox, we cover everything up in breadcrumbs. Everybody's watching. I just don't know if they're in shock or just waiting for the smoke. <laughs> um, again, it's really, really, really critically important to get the edges, get the sides, because you're apparently sealing by magic keeps the cheese from running. And we're gonna do a rollover again on this one. This one looks like it's almost ready. And the video said, make sure you don't get distracted. Because after you covered it the first time, you want to go with egg one more time. I'm just rolling the sucker all in here. There we go. That's pretty well covered. And I would say for two pieces, that, what I put in here? One cup. One cup was fine, the oil, eh, I should say maybe, maybe a little bit more than a half a cup of oil. I'm just like, so not a big fan of a whole lot of oil. <laughs> okay, and we're going to turn it over one more time. because this stuff is going to get thrown away and again make sure we get the edges the sides the whole nine yards and after it's all thoroughly covered in I got a bad feeling this one's going to run on me because of this thing here but now we're going to very carefully place this in oil Nowhere did I find how long you're supposed to cook it. So this is going to be a trial and error. The other question, just to show you how uh, new I'm at this cooking thing, is I was never told what to do with with uh, old oil. Um, I know you definitely don't want to dump it down the sink. You'll turn it into sludge. You'll burn up your pipes, one of the two. Okay, this is looking good. Mixing bowl. In school and uh, college last a couple of years ago when I went to college the uh, oh my guys gave me this best tool ever <laughs> sorry about that we're back yep now now we firm the leak so I think since we firm the leak I think it's done it goes in here a big streak. Assuming that's a good thing. <laughs> ah. This one is a little bit worse. But I'm learning how to turn it. All right, that's just so. Put 
breakfast in the garden with the rest of the chat how are you Andrea what's going on guys so from the Czech cooking kitchen besides uh, kolaches I guess we can make other things too so as you said that oh that who I'll that you at the vine And it's holding. I guess the uh, stuff in it keeps it from running. The eggs and the flour. As far as taste, here's what it looks like right now. Kind of looks like a big fat burrito. Like a crisp burrito. It's the healthiest thing, but uh, this is definitely one of the ones I wanted to try. Once in a while, I guess you can't hurt. Sorry guys, look quiet, a bit multitasking. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> I guess there's supposed to be a little bit of salt in there, but I think the cheese has already got plenty of it. We'll see how this turns out. First one is definitely a lot prettier. Hey, what's going on, Scott? This one's a little thicker. I think I'm going to let it go a little longer. Scott, this mess is called, uh, I guess, fried cheese. Or smudging you see here in check. Well, I'm going to let this thing finish up. Uh, my potatoes are ready. Oh, 
pulse them out of garlic. Just a drop of olive oil. Back in here. Yeah, I think we're done here too. Put a little bit of ranch in here, just a smidge it. I'm actually thinking that probably one of these would have filled me up. Oh, it's also best served with tartar sauce. So, let's see. And there's actually a homemade chicken recipe for one of those too. I just want to see how this part turns out and then kind of go from there. So, this is done. And Chef Rudy wishes you a uh, good appetite, good times, and uh, let me know what you guys think. Have a good night.